Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we're looking at the RTX 3080 Trinity from Zotac. The only problem is I kind of wish I looked at it first before all of the other AIB cards. Stay tuned to find out why. Let's do this. Unleash the Kraken, the Kraken Z63 AIO cooler from NZXT. Their latest all-in-one liquid cooler is unlike anything else on the market. Featuring a built-in LCD display so you can completely customise the look of your CPU cooler with GIFs and CAM data. Featuring powerful cooling from a 280mm radiator, a 7th gen Acer Tech pump, impressive socket support and an amazing 6 year warranty. To find out more click the link in the description below. So, two things that I really want to sort of get out of the way. The first one is you'll probably be hearing that the audio in this video sounds potentially a lot lot better. So let me know in the comments section if that is the case because we've done some jiggery pokery and some hocus pocus and basically tried to sort out the audio. On the other note, uh, I know the intro to this was kind of cryptic and there is reasons behind this and I want to put it out there from the offset. I don't want to crap on Zotac. They haven't done anything wrong. And I guess really we have to look at pricing of other cards and stuff to kind of make what I'm going to say makes sense. So this is an MSRP card essentially, always meant to be, but these days no one even knows what an MSRP card is because prices are all over the place and frankly you can't technically buy any of the cards at the moment. Hopefully that's going to change, you know, as time progresses, as retailers get stock and so forth. Who's to blame for that? Well, no one really knows. I don't think it's really down to the brands, I don't think it's down to Nvidia, I don't think it's down to retailers. I think generally there was just more uptake in the cards than what people were expecting, what Nvidia were expecting, what Zotac, Asus, MSI and all the other brands were expecting. So now that's out of the way, let's talk about the card. This was meant to be an MSRP card. And if I looked at this first and if I had a Founders Edition card to compare it to, Nvidia, then I would be looking at it and probably saying, do you know what, look at this compared to the Founders, you're getting you know, the same clock speeds, you're getting the same price, but you are getting, you know, the Trinity cooler with the triple fan design, you're getting the back plate, you're getting this, you're getting that, in comparison to the Founders Edition. The problem is I looked at a more expensive card, the MSI Gaming X Trio first, and that basically blew me away. Then I looked at the Asus card, the Tough uh, OC, which was meant to be an MSRP card, but the pricing even on that has gone up and down like an absolute yo-yo. And that was absolutely, again, mind-blowing, even com in comparison to the MSI card. So from what I'm told now, maybe the Asus card is actually going to come out a little bit more expensive, leaving this really competing against the Founders Edition card, which I haven't even got. So I'm not going to try and compare that to that because I simply can't. Instead, we are going to have to compare it to the Asus card, which is either the same price or $50 or £50 more, and then the MSI card, which is $100 or £100 more. So... Like I mentioned, spec-wise, it's the same. We have the same memory clock speed, 19 gigabits per second effective. We have the same core clock speed. We have the same boost clock speed. So really, why would you buy a Zotac card in this Trinity form over anything else? Well, frankly, a lot of it comes down to the cooler. I mean, to start with, you're going to notice the card itself. Well, let's get the box out of the way. The card itself, it looks stupidly long, but it's actually not really. In comparison to the MSI card and the Asus card that came out, that I have already looked at, it's actually a little bit smaller in height. And I think that gives that optical illusion that it's gonna be much, much bigger. Admittedly, when it's inside an ATX motherboard, kind of sits here and does have a weird overhang, but every card is like that. We do get this triple fan design featuring the Zotac branding and the Zotac logo. It's It feels good. It feels what I expect from a Zotac card in terms of quality, uh, the build, the general kind of design. I mean, this feels like kind of metal. Whereas on other, even more expensive cards like the MSI Gaming X Trio, it's made out of some kind of weird injection molded ABS. So maybe this is going to be better for heat dissipation. All this stuff we're going to find out in the benchmark results, which we are going to have for you. And they're going to be available 1080p, 1440p, 4K, and even some 8K testing. And then again, ray tracing on, ray tracing off, DLSS on, DLSS off, ray tracing and DLSS. We've got everything. And I'll be honest with you, I'm completely knackered. I haven't slept properly properly in about two weeks because I've been testing all these cards. Also compared to I guess the MSI one we have got two 8-pin connectors as opposed to the three 8-pin connectors that the MSI one has. So does that mean that we're going to get less results uh, in terms of power consumption and things like that? I kind of I tr I'm trying to figure out where this card sort of lies and obviously I know the benchmark results I'm going to show them to you in a very quick second but yeah let's just run them and then we can maybe go through the facts. Run the benchmarks.
So benchmark wise, I wanted to make it clear from the get go that we are in a really weird situation because we didn't have a founder's edition card. I am left comparing this to essentially two cards that are potentially more expensive than this one are higher clock speeds than this one. You know, you're talking 1785 on the Azus one and uh, 1815 on the MSI. So yeah, a little bit above the kind of reference speeds that are on the founder's edition and on this card. So it kind of makes this look terrible. But it's not terrible. That's the problem. If you take them cards out of the equation and you look at what this offers over the 20 series, so the 2080 Ti, the 2080 Super, even looking at the 1080 Ti, because there are people out there who generally skip a generation. And I think that's a very wise move to do. If you've got a 2080 Ti, is it worth upgrading to a 3080? Probably not as much as someone who skipped that generation and is still rocking a 1080 or a 1080 Ti. The problem is, obviously, you still can't go out and buy the card. So... <laughs> Kind of, I feel like I'm raising complete moot points because I'm saying you could do this, you could do that, but you can't do any of it because the cards simply aren't available. Now, this card was a little bit frustrating in the fact that there's a train going past my, my office right now. So, I mean, this card is frustrating in the fact that when you look at the results, especially on the power consumption and the temperatures and things like that, it just doesn't look as great compared to the competition. But because pricing is all over the place at the moment, I don't really know what to say in terms of, well, this could be better because it could be cheaper. What does it really mean? I don't know, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to actually try and work this one out. Try and deduce where this belongs in the market. Is it a good proposition for that kind of money in comparison to the other cards that we looked at? Is it a good proposition compared to what you've already seen on the Founders Edition side of things? I'm so confused as to what's going on here. I mean, yes, the build quality is good. Yes, it's got some really nice RGB on the top, but is that really enough to compete in today's market? There is one bit of glimmering hope for Zotac, and that is the fact that I think, personally, they could maybe even tweak the fan curve and the VBIOS so that the fans are even just that little bit louder. There's a little bit of headroom, two to three decibels they could quite easily add onto this. Maybe even have the fan come on that little bit earlier, which would give us a more sustained boost over a longer period of time, which would then maybe bump them performance results up for no extra cost. I mean, that's not that hard for Zotac to implement that, have it as a VBIOS, allow people to download it, and away you go. So maybe they could do that. The other kind of thing that really this card has got going for it is the fact that it comes with a three-year warranty, which is good in its own right. But if you register the card with Zotac, they will give you an extra two years on top of that. So you end up with a five year extended warranty, which I kind of feel is a really, really good selling point at the moment. Is it enough to kind of, you know, say this is the one to buy for because it has a decent warranty? Kind of seems like, especially for me in the UK and anyone in Europe, you'll understand it, that manufacturers are kind of heading down that road of trying to conform to the actual law and regulations that are in place, like the Consumer Credit Act. It used to be the Sales of Goods Act and everything. So. Is that enough? Only you guys can decide. Let me know in the comments section below. Really intrigued. And let me know, like I've said in every video, were you able to get a 3080 yourself? There is one good thing about this card, and that is the fact that it uses a reference PCB design. So there's nothing stopping me water blocking it and then really seeing what it can do. Maybe that's an idea for another video. Let me know if you want to see that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.